What is going on YouTube? It is I, the Kosher Potatoes, and today I'm going to present y'all the DPMS Panther Arms Sportable AR-15. So today I'll be going over the basic specifications of this rifle, and I'll also be giving out my personal thoughts and opinion on this rifle based on my personal past experience. Um, it's been a little over a year since I've owned this rifle, so and um, I've thrown at least a thousand rounds downrange. And uh, it's safe to say that I think it's the right time for me to put a review on this rifle and show its true colors. So, to begin with, the DPMS Sportable AR-15 is a direct impingement gas-operated rifle. It fires in 5.56 NATO and 223 Remington. That being said, the, uh, the ammunition is plentiful and it's relatively cheaper to shoot in comparison to your 308s, 300 wind mag, etc. Alright, so first we're going to start with the overall length of this rifle. This rifle comes in around 32 and a half inches with the stock fully collapsed and once you have the stock fully extended it runs around 36 and a half inches. So this is a carbon length rifle so keep that in mind. The second thing we're going to go over is the weight. The weight of this rifle weighs around six and a half pounds with, without the presence of the magazine or any optics or anything additional on the rifle, just the bare rifle itself. Now with a fully loaded magazine and um, you know your basic optics such as your iron sights and perhaps a red dot scope, you may expect it to weigh around 7 pounds, give or take. The barrel of the DPMS Sportable AR-15 is a 16 inch chromium molly denim barrel with a 1 to 9 twist rate, topped off with an A2 birdcage and you have a Picatinny rail gas block. Now, I will let you know one thing, this rifle barrel is not chrome light. Chromium molly denim barrel is um, basically the material, it's an alloy of which the barrel itself is made of, not the lining. Alright, rolling up next with the rifle is we have the stock. The stock of the DPMS Sportable is a DPMS Partis 6 point collapsible stock. This stock, and I'll be quite honest, does not fit flush with the buffer tube. That being said, you will notice a lot of rattling report. You will have a lot of report of rattling from just tagging along with the stock itself. The stock comes in with a single point sling attachment, which I am not a big fan of, however I still utilize it as it, does, as it does not have a sling attachment whereby the castle nut. And um, this may bother some of you, however there are a lot of aftermarket stocks out there available and if you choose to replace so, uh, more power to you. Alright, next thing we got up after the stock is the lower receiver of the rifle. And the lower receiver of the rifle is made of a 7075 T6 aluminum. Not that it should matter to you anyways. However, it is a forge, it is a forge lower. It comes with an A2 pistol grip and a mil spec trigger. This trigger has a you know typical seven pound pull. So it's a bit of a hefty pull. However, if you keep your trigger mechanism nice and polished and oiled up, it shouldn't be too much of an issue. It shouldn't be too too heavy of a pull. So Nothing nothing out of the ordinary, nothing I should put a side note on there. Alright, so up next we have the upper receiver. The upper receiver is where the AR-15 or the Sportacle differentiates from most AR-15s out there in the market, primarily due to its cosmetic features. Um, so as you can see, the, Air, the DPMS Sportacle is a slim profiled rifle. It does not have a dust cover, forward assist, or shell deflector. So if you're a left-handed shooter, sorry, but you're out of luck. Um, and the next thing about the uh, Sportable Upper is that it comes with a three and quarter inch Picatinny rail, so it's pretty standard. It also has a Picatinny rail attachment on the gas block. And also you'll notice that it does not have a two point sling attachment on the gas block, nor does it have a bayonet. All right, so I got one last thing just as a side note to the upper receiver. And this is the, uh, the Picatinny rail attachment on the gas block. Now, the rail attachment on the gas block has a slight offset, or a quarter inch depression in relation to the uh, flat top upper. Um, I'm not sure if this is, uh, this is prevalent to most of the rifles out there in the market. However, I know that this is a, this is a thing for the DPMS, Sportacle, and Oracle series of rifles. And the way to solve this is that you get a pair of iron sights, or you can just get a front sight post that is made specifically for a gas block attachment. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the post-review narrative, which I will be giving my personal thoughts and opinions on this rifle, so, based on my experience. Um, if you care to hear for what I have to say, feel free to stay. If not, then thanks for watching anyways. Um, so the first thing I want to go over is 
you know what I think as the for um, what I think of the uh, DPMS Sporticle as a whole, as just as a rifle. I think it's a big. It gives you a big bang for the buck because it's really good in value. Um, nowadays, when I got this rifle, I got it at Academy last year for my birthday for five hundred dollars, and so that really stood to me. Um, so it's definitely affordable. It's an excellent entry level rifle. You know, it's you can't you can't really beat the price with any other AR-15 for what it, for what it's worth. And uh, I'm definitely impressed with its performance once I got it zeroed in. Like, you know, it has excellent practical accuracy. So, generally speaking, this is a well-made rifle. It's basically a simplified DPMS Oracle. So, for those of you who are familiar with it, this is definitely the same rifle. And the past 1,000 rounds of fire, it's well over 1,000 rounds. I have yet to have a failure extract, failure to fire, and a failure to feed. It's, um, so far, it's been working well. Um, and the thing that really also stands out is that how it's not really too picky with the ammo and that's what I like about this rifle in particular um, that it really to me eats steel ammo like a champ you know I've fed this thing through monarch steel ammo and tool ammo and those are the major two um, steel ammunition that I ever do for plinking or you know 4th of July blast off that's for say um, and uh, this recent 4th of July I actually blasted off 200 rounds of monarch ammunition steel ammo 223 and uh, this thing cycles just fine. I've never had an issue with it, not a single malfunction. Um, however, given that it is steel cased, you will have to take cautious measures when it comes to maintaining your firearm because when you shoot, anytime you're shooting steel case, you're going to experience some really nasty blowback because the case does not expand as well as the brass casings do. So you have to be aware that you will get a lot of gunk and carbon in your in your um, in your chamber, your upper receiver. So if you take care, if you just give your weapons um, proper maintenance, it should take care of you. Given that this rifle not a chrome, does not have a chrome barrel or a chromed um, chamber, it feeds through steel just as fine. You know, I have no problem. I'm not gonna be scared. However, I will pick off a few, a few brands that I, you know, that I quote unquote trust. So for those of y'all interested in buying this rifle, I definitely recommend it. Um, it's a good entry level rifle. You know, for fun and planking recreational. And I will be coming out with another video, you know, presenting this rifle in, in the range. I'm going to be taking shots off 50 yards and 100 yards, and I'm going to give a feedback on accuracy and how well I can shoot, if I can shoot. <laughs> so, uh, that will be it for today. Uh, thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you are looking forward to the next shooting video, feel free to thumbs up this video and subscribe. And uh, give me any critical, uh, critical analysis on this video. How can I improve my channel uh, down in the comment section below. Peace out.